Today we'll share seven signs that God is saying you are on the right path. Are you wandering through life's labyrinth, seeking a sign, a beacon of light to affirm you're on the right path? Imagine, for a moment, that each step you take resonates with a divine frequency, a subtle yet profound affirmation that you are indeed moving in harmony with a greater plan. Join me as we explore the seven unmistakable signs that God is affirming you're exactly where you need to be, moving closer to your divine purpose with every breath. And also we'll pray a powerful prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. So stick around to the end and open up your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. The first sign is unwavering peace. Embarking on a journey towards unwavering peace is akin to navigating through a tempest with an unshakable faith that guides you to serene shores. This peace, profound and incomprehensible, is a beacon of God's presence in our lives, a divine whisper reassuring us, you are on the right path. Imagine standing amidst a storm where chaos reigns and uncertainty clouds the horizon, yet within you there blooms an inexplicable calm, a peace so deep and still, it is as if the storm outside ceases to exist. This is not merely an emotional state, it is a spiritual reality, a testament to the presence of God within us, guiding, comforting, and affirming our journey. The scripture offers profound insight into this peace that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4 7 declares, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse is not just a promise, it is a reality for those who choose to trust in God's sovereignty. It speaks of a peace that does not make sense to the world, a peace that cannot be explained or dissected by human wisdom. It is a divine gift that guards our innermost being, ensuring that even in the midst of life's fiercest battles, we remain anchored in Christ. This peace is a sign, a marker on the path of righteousness, indicating that we are aligned with God's will. It is easy to be swayed by the storms of life, to doubt our direction when obstacles arise. Yet the peace that God provides is an unwavering light, guiding us through darkness, ensuring that even when we cannot see the way, we can trust the one who leads us. John 14, 27 offers a powerful assurance from Jesus himself. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Here, Jesus distinguishes the peace he offers from any peace the world can provide. It is a peace that dispels fear, that steadies the heart in the midst of turmoil. How then can we cultivate this unwavering peace? It begins with a deliberate choice to trust in God's promises, to anchor our lives in His truth. Isaiah 26.3 promises you will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. This verse highlights the importance of focus and trust. Keeping our minds stayed on God through prayer, through meditating on His Word, through worship, ensures that we remain in the realm of His peace. It is a peace that is not passive. It requires active engagement with the divine, a constant reorientation of our thoughts and hearts towards God. In a world that often feels like a sea of chaos, God's peace is our anchor and compass. It is a reminder that we are not alone, that the creator of the universe is with us, guiding us towards our divine destiny. To walk in this peace is to walk in confidence, not in our own strength, but in the assurance of God's presence and provision. The second sign is growth amidst challenges. My friends, every hurdle we encounter, every storm we weather, serves as the chisel in the hands of the Almighty, meticulously sculpting us into the masterpieces He envisioned us to be. This process, while daunting, imbues us with strength, faith, and character unparalleled, shaping us into beacons of light and hope. Consider the metaphor of the olive tree, deeply rooted, resilient, thriving in arid conditions, producing fruit of great value. Just as the olive must be pressed to yield oil, so too must we face pressure to manifest the richness within us. James 1-2-4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, 
whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It is in the furnace of life's challenges that our faith is refined, our character forged, and our true essence unveiled. Amidst the cacophony of life's battles, if you discover within you an oasis of peace, a tranquility that defies the chaos surrounding you, recognize it as God's gentle affirmation. You are where you need to be. This peace transcending all understanding guards our hearts and minds, Philippians 4.7 serving as a fortress amidst life's uncertainties. It is a testament to God's presence, a reminder that He walks with us, even through the darkest valleys. In moments of doubt or despair, when the path ahead seems obscured by fog, remember Peter walking on water. When his gaze was fixed on Jesus, he transcended the impossible. It was only when he diverted his attention to the storm that fear took hold, and he began to sink. Matthew 14, 29, 31. So too must we keep our eyes fixed on the Savior, drawing strength from His unwavering presence, for He is the beacon that guides us through the storm. Remember, challenges are not mere obstacles. They are divine instruments designed to draw out our inherent potential, to cultivate within us the virtues of resilience, faith, and unwavering trust in God's plan. As you navigate through life's trials, May you embrace them not as hindrances but as opportunities for growth, as each challenge is a stroke of God's brush on the canvas of your life, transforming trials into a testament to His grace and love. The third sign is inner conviction. This is the whisper of God's guidance amidst the storms of life, the unyielding voice that steadies our hearts when waves of uncertainty lash out. This profound, unshakable conviction that you are walking the path you're meant to traverse even as opposition mounts, serves as a divine beacon illuminating the way forward in accordance with God's will. Such conviction is not of human making. It is of the Holy Spirit at work within us, affirming our direction, molding our resolve in the hands of divine purpose. In the scriptures, we find countless testimonies to this truth. Consider Jeremiah called the weeping prophet, who lamented his mission yet proclaimed, but if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name. His word is in my heart, like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Jeremiah 29 Jeremiah's inner conviction, fueled by the Holy Spirit, compelled him forward, despite the immense opposition and personal despair he faced. In the heart of turmoil, when all around you seems to crumble, finding an island of peace within signifies God's reassuring presence. This peace, which surpasses all understanding, Philippians 4.7, acts as an anchor holding you steadfast in the knowledge that you are exactly where you need to be. It's a divine assurance that He walks beside you, a silent partner in every step, a comforting presence in every breath. This peace is not a mere absence of conflict. It is a profound, active presence of God in your life, a testament to His faithfulness and love. Consider the story of Paul and Silas in Acts 16.25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Imprisoned, beaten, and shackled, they found an indescribable peace and joy in praising God. Their inner conviction and peace were so powerful that it led to an earthquake that freed them, a literal and metaphorical breaking of chains. This illustrates that when we are aligned with God's will, our inner peace can lead to extraordinary outcomes, impacting not just our lives but those around us. Thus, to walk in alignment with God's will is to nurture this inner conviction and to cultivate peace amidst chaos. It involves daily surrender to the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to guide our steps, decisions, and actions. It's a commitment to remain steadfast in faith, even when the path is obscured, trusting that God's plans for us are for welfare and not for calamity, to give us a future and a hope. As you impart this message, do so with the understanding that each person's journey is unique, 
yet the divine compass pointing towards God's will is accessible to all. It is a journey of faith, of trust, of surrender, and of relentless pursuit of that inner conviction and peace which signifies being on the path God has set for us. Let this be a beacon for you, guiding you towards a deeper, more profound relationship with God, where you find your purpose, your calling, and peace in His unerring will. The fourth sign is confirmation through God's Word. Confirmation through God's Word is not merely a sign, it is a divine embrace, a whisper from the Almighty into the depths of our soul, saying, You are exactly where you need to be. Imagine, if you will, a path shrouded in the thickness of night, where each step forward is an act of faith. In this scenario, the Word of God emerges as a lamp unto our feet, as eloquently stated in Psalm 119, 105, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This verse isn't just poetry, it is the reality of divine guidance, where Scripture illuminates the steps we are to take, dispelling shadows of doubt and lighting up our journey with the brilliance of God's presence. When Scripture speaks directly to our situation, offering guidance, comfort, or reassurance, it is not coincidence. It is the voice of God tailored to the intricacies of our lives. Consider the story of Joshua, a young leader tasked with leading Israel into the Promised Land, a mission filled with uncertainty and fear. God's word to Joshua in Joshua 1.9 have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This was not only timely but transformative. Joshua's story is a vivid demonstration of how God's word confirms our path, empowers us with courage, and reassures us of his unfailing presence. In teaching this profound concept, it's essential to emphasize that confirmation through God's word is not a one-time event, but a continual dialogue. The scriptures are alive, breathing life into our circumstances, speaking anew in every season of our lives. Hebrews 4.12 underscores this dynamic interaction. For the word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to divide soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. This passage invites us to approach the Bible not just as a text, but as a living entity capable of engaging us in a deeply personal way, offering tailored guidance that aligns with God's will for us. Furthermore, confirmation through God's Word fosters an intimate relationship with Him. It invites us into a personal encounter where we are not just reading words, but experiencing the presence of God speaking directly into our lives. When we open our hearts to Scripture, we allow God to write His promises, His guidance, and His love upon the tablets of our hearts. Jeremiah 31 33 captures this beautifully. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. This is the essence of confirmation through God's Word, a divine assurance that we are known, loved, and guided by God. My friends, as you seek confirmation of your path through God's Word, remember it requires an open heart, ready to receive, and ears attuned to the divine whisper that speaks in the silence between the verses. Engage with Scripture actively, prayerfully, and expectantly, allowing it to penetrate your life, transform your mind, and guide your steps. Let the Word of God be the compass that navigates you through the complexities of life affirming that you are indeed on the right path as ordained by God. The fifth sign is joy in service. You see, joy in service is not merely a fleeting feeling, but a celestial signpost guiding us toward our true path, a path ordained by God Himself. It is in the quiet moments of selfless giving, in the acts of unconditional love, where we find the most resplendent joy that transcends understanding. This joy ineffable and boundless, serves as a beacon, illuminating the way to align with God's will, revealing that in serving others we truly serve Him. Consider the words of Jesus Christ as captured in the Gospel of Matthew 25:40. Truly I tell you, 
Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Here lies a celestial invitation to see Christ in everyone and to understand that service to others is the most profound expression of our love for God. This scripture not only underscores the sanctity of service, but elevates it to a divine calling, where each act of kindness reverberates through the heavens, echoing our commitment to follow in the footsteps of Christ. To serve with joy is to recognize that we are instruments of God's love and grace. It is to acknowledge that, through us, He reaches out to mend the broken, to uplift the downtrodden, and to give hope to the despairing. Every smile shared, every burden eased, every word of encouragement spoken, becomes a conduit of His divine mercy and compassion. It is in these moments of genuine service that we find our hearts strangely warmed, not by the accolades of men but by the silent approval of the Almighty, affirming that we are indeed on the path He has set for us. Yet why does joy and service signify alignment with God's path? It is because true joy is the offspring of love, and God is love. 1 John 4 8. When we serve others out of love, we tap into the infinite wellspring of God's own joy. It is a divine cycle. His love flows through us, generating joy in our hearts and in those we serve, which then circles back to Him in a symphony of ceaseless praise. This joy is not dependent on our circumstances, but rooted in the profound peace of knowing we are fulfilling His purpose in our lives. Let us also draw inspiration from the wisdom of Mother Teresa, who embodied the essence of joyous service. She said, Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. This statement reminds us that the magnitude of our actions is not what imbues them with significance. Rather, it is the love and joy with which we perform them. Our daily lives are filled with opportunities to serve in small ways yet each is imbued with the potential to touch a life profoundly. As we embark on this journey of service, let us do so with hearts open to the joy that comes from aligning with God's will. May we see each act of service not as a duty, but as a privilege, a sacred opportunity to spread His love and light in a world that yearns for hope. Let this joy be our strength, our guide, and our testimony to the world that we are followers of Christ walking the path He has laid before us. Remember, to serve is to love, to love is to bring joy, and in this joy, we find the clear indication that we are walking in the will of God. Let us then, with enthusiasm and unwavering faith, embrace the joy of service, making our lives a living testament to the grace and goodness of God. May our service shine as a beacon of hope, guiding others toward the love of Christ. And may the joy we find on this journey inspire a chorus of hearts to join in the divine melody of selfless love and service. For in the end, it is not in the magnitude of our actions, but in the depth of our love and the joy of our service, that we truly fulfill our divine calling and find our greatest fulfillment. The sixth sign is the fulfillment of spiritual gifts. In the realm of spiritual journeys, there's a profound truth that resonates deeply with those who have felt the call to serve and illuminate the world with the light of Christ. This truth speaks to the heart of our purpose, guiding us along a path that is both divinely appointed and uniquely ours. It's a journey of discovery, of understanding, the incredible way in which our God-given talents and gifts are not merely facets of our being, but are in essence a compass pointing us towards our divine destiny. When we begin to use these gifts in service to others and to glorify God, we find ourselves embarking on a path that is not just right but divinely orchestrated. Consider the words of Peter in 1 Peter 4.10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. This scripture encapsulates the essence of our calling. It is a powerful reminder that our gifts are not accidental. They are bestowed upon us by a Creator who knows us intimately, who crafted us with purpose and precision, and who desires us to use these gifts in a way that extends His grace and love to the world around us. But how do we know we are on the right path? The answer lies in the fruits of our labor, the impact of our service on the lives of those around us. When we find that our talents are not just fulfilling for us, 
but are also bringing joy, comfort, and enlightenment to others, we are given a clear indication of God's approval of our journey. It's as though each act of service, each moment of using our talents to glorify God, is a divine nod, affirming that we are exactly where we are meant to be. Let us also reflect on the words of Paul to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1, 6-7. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Paul's admonition to Timothy is a clarion call to all of us. It's a reminder that our spiritual gifts are like embers that, when fanned, can ignite a fire that illuminates paths, warms hearts, and sparks change. It's an encouragement that in pursuing our calling, we are empowered not by our own strength, but by the Spirit of God, a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Remember, in the fulfillment of your spiritual gifts, you are not just on the right path. You are walking in the footsteps of Jesus, bringing glory to God and shining His light into the darkest corners of the world. The seventh sign is a desire for godliness. To yearn for godliness is to seek alignment with the divine, to embody the essence of God's unfathomable love and to tread upon the path illuminated by His righteousness. It's a quest not for the faint of heart, for it demands of us everything and yet it promises infinitely more, a promise of transformation, of becoming more like our Creator in thought, in deed, and in love. When this desire for godliness stirs within us, it is as if the Spirit of the Almighty whispers gently to our spirits, affirming, you are on the right path. This is no ordinary path, for it is one paved with challenges and trials, yet it is also strewn with the blossoms of grace and the light of His presence. To walk on this path is to engage in a holy pursuit, a pursuit that Scripture has long exhorted us to undertake. In 2 Peter 1.5.7, we are called to make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. This passage not only outlines the virtues that lead to godliness, but also charts the course of our spiritual journey, reminding us that each step taken in faith is a step closer to the divine. But what does it truly mean to pursue godliness? To pursue godliness is to seek to reflect the very character of God in our lives. It is to love as He loves, unconditionally and sacrificially. It is to extend grace as He does, freely and abundantly. It is to champion justice, to embrace humility, and to walk in obedience to His commands. This pursuit is transformative, for as we draw nearer to God, the fruits of His Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control begin to flourish within us, reshaping us into His likeness. Yet this journey is not one we embark on in isolation. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 12, 1, saints and sages who have walked this path before us, whose lives inspire us to press on toward the goal. We are also accompanied by the fellowship of believers, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who walk this journey with us, encouraging us, challenging us, and reminding us that we are part of something greater than ourselves, a heavenly kingdom, a divine calling. In pursuing godliness, we also find our deepest joy and fulfillment. As Augustine of Hippo famously said, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Our souls were created to commune with the Divine, to bask in His presence, to be transformed by His love. In this pursuit, we discover not only who God is but who we are meant to be, bearers of His image, vessels of His love, ambassadors of His kingdom. My friends, as you journey toward godliness, remember that this path is marked by grace. You will stumble, you will fall, but the God who calls you is faithful and He will pick you up, dust you off, and set you back on the path. The pursuit of godliness is a lifelong journey, one that unfolds day by day, 
moment by moment. Let your heart be guided by His Spirit, let your steps be ordered by His Word, and let your life be a testament to His transforming love. And so, as we stand on the threshold of communion, let us open our hearts to the signs that illuminate our paths, the gentle assurances that we are not merely wandering but are being lovingly guided. Today, before we bow our heads in prayer, let us acknowledge these beacons of light, these signs that God is whispering, you are on the right path. Let this awareness fill us, embolden us, and guide our prayers as we seek to align even closer with this path that has been carved out for us, not by mere chance but by a grand loving design. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Creator of the universe and author of our destinies, we come before you today, hearts open and spirits willing, seeking your divine guidance and the warmth of your ever-present love. In a world where the path ahead often seems shrouded in mystery, grant us, O Lord, the discernment to recognize the signs you place before us, affirming that we are indeed walking the path you have destined for our lives. In the valleys of trial and the shadows of uncertainty, Fortify our faith, Almighty God. Let us remain steadfast in our journey towards godliness, ever mindful that the challenges and obstacles we encounter are but the refiner's fire, shaping and preparing us for the glorious destiny you have ordained. In these moments, remind us of your promise, that we are more than conquerors through him who loves us, and that no hardship can separate us from your love. We beseech you, Creator God, to cultivate within us the fruits of your Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May these virtues not just take root, but flourish within our hearts and lives, serving as clear signals that we are aligned with your divine purpose and path. Let the fruits of your Spirit be the compass that guides us, the light that brightens our darkest days, and the anchor that holds us steadfast in the storms of life. O Lord, our shepherd and guide, instill in us a heart of humility, a spirit eager to serve and uplift others. Let our lives be reflections of your love and grace, demonstrating through our actions and words that we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus, who came not to be served but to serve. May our journey be marked by acts of kindness that echo your love, by words that speak your truth and by lives that overflow with your grace. Almighty God, we ask you to fill our hearts with your unconditional love and compassion, guiding us to live out this love daily. May we show kindness and mercy to those around us as a testament to moving closer to you and embodying your presence in the world. Help us to see your image on every face, to hear your voice in every story, and to extend your hand in every act of kindness. God of wisdom, bestow upon us the gifts of wisdom and understanding. As we navigate the complexities of life, let insight inspired by your holy word be our guide. Let this wisdom be the beacon that guides us on the right path, illuminating the steps we should take in accordance with your will, and ensuring that each decision brings us closer to the life you have envisioned for us. Father in heaven, kindle within us a burning desire for godliness, a longing to live lives that please you and reflect your goodness. May this desire lead us ever closer to you, serving as a sign that we are faithfully following the path you have set before us. Empower us, O God, to be beacons of your light and love in a world that so desperately needs it. We pray for every soul to listen, watch, and seek your presence through this prayer. May they find in your word the strength to face each day, the hope to dream boldly, and the love that transforms lives. We dedicate our paths to you, Lord, trusting that you will lead us to places of growth, service, and profound joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Type amen in the comment section if you are blessed by this video. Also, please help us spread this uplifting message by sharing it with the people you know, and remember to like and subscribe to support this channel. My friends, as we draw this moment of reflection to a close, I invite you to carry this thought with you. The path God ordains for us is often illuminated by the light of inner peace, the warmth of joy in simple pleasures, and the strength found in trials to overcome. May you find in each step, no matter how small, 
a divine echo of confirmation, a celestial whisper that assures you, you are exactly where you need to be. Let this assurance guide you, inspire you, and motivate you to continue your journey with faith and courage. For on this divine journey, every step taken in faith is a step towards fulfilling your heavenly purpose on this earth. God bless you, and may your path always be guided by His light.